Hey everyone and welcome to another tutorial and uh, this is a glorious one because we're doing Dreyfend the Hunter from our very own Kickstarter Deoguard and this was always my favourite model when we were concepting, um, designing them, this was this was the one you know I had my, uh, my eye on and uh, so I always wanted to do a really nice job of painting it. And obviously there's a lot of skin on this figure and I would say that skin's probably, I mean it's probably one of the hardest things to paint in miniatures isn't it? And there's quite a lot of it too. So even though I've done a lot of skin, uh, there's always a little bit of nerves in the back of your mind and there's a little bit of added pressure when it's kind of your own figure. But I'm here now and this is almost finished, I'm actually... I've been filming the second part of the tutorial, all the other details. This part we're just focusing on the skin. But I'm at the stage where I am very happy with what I've done. And I'm also happy to say that the skin's not easy, but I did come up with a process that I think is uh, reasonable in terms of how long it takes and uh, how many steps. There's quite a lot of airbrush glazing, so Basically, we're going to be doing some rough layering and all the highlighting is done with the brush. And then what we've done is use the airbrush to do some glazes and smooth it out and get these nice kind of shadows. And I found this a, a very nice process, quite forgiving, and it just saves a lot of time. I've actually done two projects this year that had lots of skin and I did them to my best ability. And I didn't use any airbrush for these apart from a kind of pre-highlight, which I always do. Uh, and they just took a really, really long time. So I don't think you need an airbrush to get a very, very high standard result on skin, but it is time consuming. What I'm happy with this tutorial is I feel we've kind of got best of both because it does feel like a, a brush painted model and it's got that nice aesthetic but we saved a lot of time and got a great result with the airbrush. We could do glazes with the brush, but doing it with the airbrush makes it faster and it makes it very uniform and that's the advantage. It worked really well for this figure just because of the amount of skin. I mean, there's a lot of skin on it. So it was one, it was worthwhile uh, doing it. Say for example, it was just the arms and the face. I probably wouldn't bother with the airbrush technique because the uh, the legs are such a large surface area, it just made it worth getting the airbrush out and uh, yeah, just save that large amount of time. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Part one will just focus on the skin and then I will do a second part which will show all the other details and uh, you're kind of on easy street really after you've done the skin. So the second part will be a little bit of a faster tutorial and we'll just go through some nice ways to paint these different elements. The NMM spear uh, was a fun part. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it and I hope that uh, it helps you with some skin. Just one thing going into it, always remember that skin is one of the hardest things we can paint on miniatures. I always find it tricky and I've had a lot of experience, so just go easy on yourself. If at any point you're not happy with the results, just relax, learn from it, you know, and, and just, just take your time with this process. But yeah, so always go easy on yourself and uh, just remember this is a tricky subject and try to enjoy the learning process and the results. Before we start a project like this, we've got to decide what's the light source going to be. Of course, we need to think about the style as well. But I knew that I wanted to have a very heavy light source, so a lot of shadowing on one side and a really obvious direction that the light was coming from. So I needed to decide, you know, where this light source was coming from and hitting the figure and which areas would be light and shadow. One day I had the model sat on my desk and I just looked and it kind of had the perfect uh, light situation and shadow cast on it. And I decided to set it up and just grab some photos. Normally, I probably wouldn't do this myself as I kind of get a vision in my head and I try to follow that. 
but I thought this would be really useful to show you what we're aiming for. And this is something you can do with any figure as well. It's if you set up your light so that it shines from the direction you intend your light to come from, and then you photograph it, you can use that later as a reference. And that's really useful. So yeah, you can see through these different photos, we've got a really heavy shadow on one side, and it helps to, you know, understand in your head what are the shapes of the highlight, how broad are they going to be, how much contrast can we put in. You can see actually you can have pretty severe shadows, uh, even with skin. And together with looking at references of real people, I suggest looking at portrait photography, because normally they have uh, actually a similar setup to this, where they have studio lights set up from one particular direction. And that will help you understand how much contrast you can put in and the colours and things like that. To solidify this idea, I'm going to do black and white uh, with the undercoat. So spray it with Chaos Black and then you'll see in the next step we spray Tamiya Flat White and we try and replicate this light situation I have in the photos. And together with those two things, that's really useful for planning your light source and also getting the figure going. With the light source direction decided, I know that it's going to be coming from the upper right and uh, yeah, just from one side and we want some heavy shadows here. I'm going to use the airbrush with some white to kind of solidify that idea and it will also help the paints after be applied. Um, and it's just, you know, when you're trying to decide a light source, it's really nice to use the black and white to just make sure you've got that right. So I've got some Tamiya flat white loaded in the airbrush, nice and diluted. And we always recommend Tamiya over white ink. And there's a lot of advantages to Tamiya. Uh, one of the main ones is that paint will adhere to it much easier um, and it's a lot matter. So what I'm going to do is hold the model like this, which is almost um, the camera's kind of looking where I'm imagining the light to come from. So it's down from above, but only on one side. And we're going to carefully spray. from this one direction. I'm not going to do too much on the hair because I want the hair to be quite dark, but the face for sure, I want to be quite light. I'm actually really just trying to get it on the skin because all of the leather elements and the hair and the weapons will be quite dark, but it doesn't matter or hurt if I hit them. And the good thing about using diluted Tamiya is the first pass is going to be quite gray. So we're not gonna get like a bright white. And what we can do is build up that intensity in the parts that we know we wanna have a bright highlight. For example, this side uh, is gonna be the shadow side, but there's still elements on the muscles that need to be highlighted. So what I can do with that is just do one kind of soft pass with the Tamiya. And now it's picked out those areas to highlight but it's obviously not an intense kind of white. The thigh is probably going to be one of the brightest parts, so I am going to build the intensity up with that to the, uh, the top white, the bright white. So I still take my time with this, even though it's just a, a pre-highlight. And it's going to take several passes with the Tamiya. Now the back's interesting here on the leg because we want this to be shadow, but probably not that dark. So what I'll do is give that a light dusting. And that will likely be a reflection from the water or, or something like that. So we do want some highlighting on it. At the end of the day, having the black and white helps the paint stick to it as well. So. It's always worth doing. But this kind of view here on the legs, this is the view we're going to be photographing from. So this is kind of the, the really important one. This kind of view and this kind of view. And you can see the black and white's just shown us where the shadows are going to be. 
and that's going to help us work out those volumes for the skin as well as give the paints an easier time because they only have to cover over the white rather than black. And you can see this is what we're going to be looking for with the thigh where we have the shadow here and the light's just hitting from this side. So I'm going to let that dry and do another pass or two. So as you can see from this view, it looks kind of mostly white, but we still have some nice shadows uh, on the bottom, like under the arm there. And what's more important is as we turn it, this is where we have a lot of shadow. What I find with skin is that if we start too dark, it's really hard to kind of find that top light and that brightness, um, unless we're going for a, a particular look. But I think it's easier to start reasonably uh, light or in the middle, and then it's just so easy to darken it down. Sometimes I've started skin from a really dark base coat and I can never quite get there without adding too many layers. So um, this just gives us a nice foundation. I'm just gonna give one last pass with the airbrush to get that full intensity around the important areas. So this thigh, because it's uh, kind of horizontal, it's gonna catch a lot of light and then the face as well. What I like about doing this black and white too uh, is it will catch the eyeballs and I find it much easier to, to pick out those eyes and, and see where they are. But when we paint the eyes, uh, we'll talk about that some more. If you really want, you could um, put shadows back in with black if you feel you go over the top. But I honestly wouldn't. We can, we can do that with colour. This is just to get us going and, like I said, solidify our idea for the light source. And don't worry if uh, you haven't got an airbrush. This isn't going to be an airbrush heavy tutorial. We might do some uh, shading with the airbrush later, but we might do it with brush. We just have to see how things go. Uh, and if you want this effect, you could just use rattle cans. I'd actually recommend Grey Seer from Citadel. And the reason for that is it's very smooth. Sometimes when we use uh, a white spray can, it's very grainy and it's hard to get rid of that grain. But the grey seer seems like a very smooth paint and paint goes over the top of it nicely. So I'd recommend Chaos Black Spray and then just some grey seer from your chosen direction. And that will definitely help you out. Um, grey seer obviously isn't as bright as white, but it's bright enough to get the effect that we need. So. That's it for the pre-highlight. You can see we've got some nice shading, um, but it's not over the top. And our light source definitely works. The face is the most important part. Got some nice light on there. And it's really cool to see how these muscles are gonna work. And this is kind of the shading effect we need on the muscles. So you could actually take a photo if you want as a reference to make sure you get those kind of volumes right. Now I need to pick the colours for my skin. So here I've got some of my favourites that I use quite a lot. I do really like this Night Quester flesh. The reason for that is it's quite a natural looking shadow. Um, it's got a bit of pink in, a bit of brown, and I really like it. Uh, I prefer this to Bugman's Glow myself as it's less saturated, but if you like Bugman's Glow, you could use something like that, for example. Then I also quite like this sandalwood colour from Scale. Um, I don't know what its intention is for, but it's, again, quite a soft, desaturated pink. And these work really well together. And this can give quite a natural looking uh, skin because it's very greyish and desaturated. So I like that. Uh, we're going to be trying to find the right balance between saturated and not you know, bright colours can make it look cool, but also unrealistic and over the top. And then for highlighting, I might use a combination of these. Uh, this is quite a generic colour, highlight skin. These Nocturna paints, um, I'm not sure you can get them anymore, so I'll do some recommendations that are similar. But this is just like an off-white, so it's uh, kind of nothing special, but I like it. This Artist Colour Light Skin is a nice colour and it's nice and matte, but it's quite tricky to use. I find these artist paints aren't uh, really, really easy to use. 
um, but I will consider using that. And then I might use some salmon rose uh, just for tone. So this will add a little more pink to the highlights and that will actually go with the wolf. I use salmon rose to highlight the wolf, so that's why I've got that in there. Then for shading, I've got a few options. Um, these are quite nice, these Nocturna paints again uh, from the same set. Burn Flesh is kind of a brownish colour. You could just mix Rhinox Hide with this. Probably what I'll do is just pick a colour for shadow and add that to Night Quester to, uh, to darken it up. Barrack Nile Burgundy is a nice desaturated purple and I like that for shading. But basically what I want to try and get across is it doesn't actually matter a huge amount the tones we use. So you can follow what I use but you don't really have to. It's more important getting uh, the volumes right and uh, a nice amount of contrast so don't stress too much about it but just have a look at your colours and think about the tones you want to go for. So... Now what to do after a pre-highlight. This is actually quite a common question because a lot of people know about this technique with the black and the white but how to utilise it properly uh, and, and get the best out of it is something I get asked about quite a lot. And really the answer kind of depends on your preferred methods in some way. A lot of this tutorial I'm going to show you how I do everything but I do encourage you to use your own preferred techniques. For example, we have kind of a lot of shades here and some, uh, you know, some highlights. What we could do is actually paint the brightest highlight over all this white at this point and then shade everything down. What I like to do is go somewhere in the middle and actually paint over with quite a dark tone and I'll build up um, from there. And this really depends on, on how you like to work. Some people might prefer going dark to light. Some people might really enjoy glazing technique and prefer to glaze their colours in um, and gradually build in shadows. So I'll just tell you how I do it, but please adjust if you have ways that you prefer to do it. All that matters really is the end result, getting the volume correct, highlight placement and a nice bit of contrast. I'm going to go for my Night Quester Flesh. I think this is a nice starting point. I'm going to use it reasonably diluted and I'm just going to go over all the skin uh, with this. I might not make it fully opaque over the light areas, um, but certainly I think this will be my first layer over the top. So it's really important when you're, you're painting like this and I'm going to use a size uh, 4 brush from Artis Opus, which is reasonably big. And even though we're going to be using quite dilute paint, you don't want to basically put a big puddle of paint over your pre-highlight because if you flood the area, it won't dry very nicely. So I'm going to be careful with how much I've loaded the brush, like this, just on the end. And you see people with paint on their thumb or their finger, and that's just checking they haven't got too much on. And you can always use a kitchen towel or whatever. So I'm going to apply the paint directly over the thigh. And if it's too diluted, that doesn't actually matter. If it's thick, then uh, too thick, then obviously that's a bit more of a problem. So I tend to start cautiously um, and be too diluted. But what we want to kind of avoid is flooding the area. So you can see it's going to be super patchy at first. So the temptation is to put loads of paint on in one go. But just be patient with this step and try and apply nice broad brush strokes, but don't put a lot of paint down in one area. You've just got to be patient, apply some paint, and wait for it to dry. So I'm going to basically continue uh, base coat this whole model, and I'll show you what it looks like after one coat of this paint. So this is the first coat, and uh, yeah, it's looking very, very messy, um, but that's just because it's diluted and we've just kind of splashed it on there, and this is absolutely fine. You can see this is the thigh where I've applied a second layer, and already it's looking far better. But we're just working in this way because if we start with it nice and diluted, then we can control um, you know, how uh, opaque this paint is. 
if we know that we just want a shadow here down the back of the leg, we could actually just thicken up the paint and just apply it directly on there. I'm just going to gradually build up this colour until I'm happy with the opacity. And this is how you can get things really smooth. It doesn't matter how poor that first layer covers and how patchy it looks. You can see with this second one, it looks tons better. But building it up in this way means we're going to get very nice colours as the colour applied over the white will be uh, much nicer and uh, we should get a nice smooth result. What you can do is leave a bit of the white if you want, if you know that's where your highlights want to be. I'm going to build this up to be reasonably opaque. The face looks really messy right now, but what's nice is it's kind of acted like a wash and the features like the eye socket, the paint is obviously gathered in and uh, it helps me see the eye. So I'm going to build up, do another coat on the face and just leave that eye out. But this Night Quest of Flesh is looking really good, uh, really natural over the, uh, the white. And just this second coat already looks better. So just move that over the leg. And you can really learn what different dilutions of paint do over this kind of step. So this shadow, we're probably going to make it darker uh, than the Night Quest of Flesh eventually. But for now, we'll build it up to be nice and opaque. And sometimes what I find is colours don't appear that dark and you think, oh, I want it a lot darker. But when you add the highlights on and you have something to compare it with, actually you might find you have adequate contrast. So what I'm planning on doing is getting this nice and opaque in the shadow areas. Then I'll do my highlights and then I'll see if I need any darker shadows then. So I am going to finish doing this second layer of base coat and I think I'll probably add a third or a fourth, whatever I need to be happy and we'll come back when I've done that and see what it looks like then. So I want to create my highlight colour now and I'm going to use that with my light skin which I'll pop on the palette. Decent blob of that. And I'll take my base coat colour, Night Quest Flesh, and make some kind of mix. So it's probably going to be mostly the light skin. I don't want to use pure light skin because it is very bright. I want to save that for the sort of final highlights. I'm going to dilute it a bit here. And there's probably a colour that matches that uh, quite closely. Actually, sandalwood is not far off. But I'd rather just mix these colours together because I know both these paints work quite well. I actually find that the Scale 75 Artist paints are quite uh, grainy. Um, but if we dilute them a nice amount, they'll obviously go over the pale base coat no problem and uh, I can get a smooth result that way. I'll possibly add a little more Quest of Flesh, something like this. Now I want to jump up quite a way because like I said before, we just want to kind of sketch out the main shadow areas, highlight areas, and then we'll put any additional tones we need afterwards. Now you can see I've made it reasonably opaque in the shadows, but actually these areas of, of highlight like here on the thigh are still a bit wishy-washy uh, and we don't really need them to be full opacity uh, because we're going to paint the highlight over this anyway. So actually having them a little bit paler will make this next coat go over the top a lot easier. Like I said, you could actually block the shadows. Uh, almost with a straight line and, and leave where you want the highlights to be uh, almost pure white but I prefer to kind of work in this way um, so you just subtly adjust. Uh, actually what we're trying to do is there shouldn't be a, a really gradual um, 
blend between the shadow area and where the highlight is. Basically here along the thigh we're going to have some transition but then most of this is going to be highlight and then it will quickly change to the shadow uh, where the thigh kind of cuts that off and the light can't get to it. So it's almost like looking from here, the light source angle, all of this area is going to be light and then this area is going to be a pretty severe shadow. So what we're going to do is block in highlight areas, shadow areas, and then we can do all the blending in between. And that will allow us to use nice diluted colors and get a, uh, a good result. So I'm going to use that highlight color we've made and I'm going to start applying this and blocking it in where I think the highlights need to be, most importantly over this thigh. And make this highlight bigger than you think because then we can do glazes to adjust it. But you can see the point where I'm painting the highlight where the thigh starts to change angle and almost go into that horizontal point and I'm just going to block all this in for now. And this paint is going over very smoothly over this uh, previous layer. So it saves us a lot of layers as opposed from going straight up from black or whatever. There you can see what I'm talking about already. It's like the shadow into the light and all we need to do later is actually get the blend in between. So I'm gonna do this a little bit bigger for now because it's so easy to get that shadow back. And then looking at this view, I think here on the calf, that'll still be kind of the highlighted area. So let's make that bigger. I've actually already done the face um, because I wanted to experiment and make sure my highlight colour was correct and uh, yeah you can see where that's working and I'm so happy with how smooth it's come out and that's because we used that bright start, the, uh, the very pale beginning. So I need to check that this is fully dry and it does look dry to me so I'll apply that second layer. And this might take some time to get it opaque but it'll be worth it because you're going to have such a smooth, nice result this way. I think how to paint smooth is one of the super common questions. So hopefully seeing some of these tricks helps with that. Just about letting each layer dry and building it up. That's looking good on the thigh. So you can see we're almost sketching this out and we'll sort the transition later. What I can do is a brush stroke with this bright colour moving towards the light. And that will deposit that pigment there so we'll have like a, a smoother line between the two. I've just made that bigger like I said because if I have some highlight here that will allow me to do glazes and form a transition. So I'll let this dry and we'll do some more layers. So back to the palette again, we just applied uh, this first highlight colour, now we're going to go for this second mix. So it's quite a jump up to this pure uh, highlight skin colour, so i definitely like to do a mix between, maybe one more before we get to this. But you can see with the base coat we started with, moving through these two tones, we've got a nice variety of tones here, and the value contrast between this and this looks like it will be adequate, but it's uh, not super interesting in terms of colour, so what we'll do is we'll just build up and get the values right and then perhaps we'll um, add in some more colours and things like that. But I just want to get the placement right and a rough idea of the, uh, the values or the brightness. So we're going to use this colour now and layer up a highlight. So with the brighter highlight mix, I'm going to start off with a reasonably narrow highlight and what we can do is broaden that up. So I'll let that dry and I'll try and adjust it and get the size right. So thinking about placements of highlights on here, we're not going to go as bright as this thigh but this definitely needs some more light. So I'm going to start drawing the paint here down the thigh. Now at this point we kind of need to ignore these details like the knee and you only need a slight variation uh, to pick out these. So if you start picking them out too early, 
you end up with too much definition. A lot of the time on sculpts we have really exaggerated um, muscles and things like that. So actually to e exaggerate them with highlights um, can make them look silly. Sometimes we can soften them with the painting. But for now what we're doing is just doing the general light of the leg as if it's a plain cylinder. And we can deal with these details by just putting little shadows in, little highlights. So just work more generally at first. So you can see my brush stroke is moving towards that highlight here, just so we build a nice transition. And you can see already it's not perfect, but we're building a nice foundation and we haven't invested too much time yet. So back to this top thigh and we'll do this top down view. I will move the brush across, broadening that highlight and starting to try and get that shape correct. It's going to come all the way down to the knee and then as we turn to the knee this will be shadow here. I like these two paints, they're, uh, they're quite easy to use um, and just using them diluted I'm getting a smooth result so far. And using the pale base coat has meant I don't need that many layers to get kind of pretty bright like this. Now, this shoulder here, I'm not sure on because from this direction, the, the face actually obscures it and blocks it. So I don't know if I need a brighter highlight than that. I might need to uh, actually dull it down with shadows. The face as well will receive highlights on here and the top of the head, but then this part of the face will be uh, obscured. And then here on the face, we're gonna have quite bright highlights across the head like that. And then it will swoop under around the cheek like this. With the head, we need to highlight all of this area. This kind of part of the cheek we might leave darker. Um, but we need a highlight that goes all the way across here. Again, try not to pick out too many details on the face yet because it will make her look older. We want to just paint this face with general light. So I'm going to build up this colour and make it nice and opaque and just do all the little bits like pick out the toes and stuff like that. Um, and I'll probably need a few coats on this thigh just to get it perfectly smooth. Um, you can see this is going to be our transitional area here where we have this line, but we're not bothered about that for now. So, yeah, I'm liking the choice of colours and it seems to be going smooth so far. OK, we'll finish the sketch, if you want to call it that, or rough highlighting uh, with the pure light skin. So, same kind of deal again, really, just building it up. Not a bad transition here, obviously it's not very well blended, but the paint's been applied very smooth. And that's more important than a smooth transition right now. As long as we have the placement right and the paint has been applied smoothly, we can fix a transition any time really. And if this turns out to be too bright, that's no problem either, we can just darken that up with some glazes or just paint over the top and that will take a few a few layers I think to build that up now on this thigh here I'm not sure whether it will need a highlight that bright probably a little bit in places like the top of the calf but we'll definitely do some uh, smaller volumes now rather than painting the entire leg So I will continue to work on that and kind of show you uh, where I get to. I think this leg highlights ended up being a little narrow. So I'm actually going to go back to a bigger brush and I've got the pure light skin and I'm going to make that a little broader. Maybe something like that. And I'll let that dry and see if that feels better. 
but that looks like a, a nicer width now. This is kind of the challenge really, getting the widths correct, that's what we call or what we refer to as uh, the volumes. It's getting the widths of each tone uh, nice. But that looks good from here. Again, we've got that transitional point. Maybe I'll make this a little wider just to give me that opportunity to uh, knock it back if I need to. But from this view, that's starting to look pretty good, isn't it? I've got a little bit of shadow underneath that muscle. This shadow here maybe needs uh, darkening at the bottom and then maybe I need a bit more mid-tone here. Just always adjusting these things. So while I'm here, I'll just apply a nice highlight to this thigh. So I'll start off too narrow and we'll see what that looks like. But I like the colors so far, it's looking quite natural. So I'm gonna show you some highlights on the face. Um, which is quite tricky without me getting my head in there. So I'm going to try and try and stay away. And it's going to be the top of the forehead here, all the way down like a kind of column, under the eye socket here in a nice round shape, then up here in the eye. And then just pick out the detail like the nose and around the lip. So I've added a little highlight skin and I'm just going to brighten this up for the final time on the thigh. This is definitely as bright as I want to go. I could change the colour but I couldn't really go any brighter anyway. Um, this highlight skin colour is very very light so quite rough sketch but we have the lights reasonably in the right place now need to build that shoulder up so not bad for a first session it's probably or I'm gonna leave it, um, just painting for a couple hours at a time. But yeah, just got a rough idea of where we're gonna take this and uh, we'll start to blend it and bring it all together soon. So at this point, I feel like before refining and, and starting to blend the skin properly, I'd like to base coat every other element. I'm gonna base coat it all with Rhinox Hide because that will work for the leather and the hair. So any dark brown will do and we'll start with it quite diluted because that will sort of help with the hair bring out some of the definition and maybe we'll build up a couple coats of that but that could cause a bit of a mess and I could make some mistakes on the skin so yeah I definitely want to do that now we could actually have done that straight after the base coat it's kind of up to you uh, when you want to do it but I think it's a good point for me to start doing it now and it also helps um, us work at how much contrast we need because it's difficult to judge the contrast of the skin when it has nothing else around it so those dark brown elements of the leather and hair will definitely help us judge the skin so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So with everything base coated in Rhinox Hide uh, the model looks totally different and you can get a better idea of the skin so now we've got that dark colour around it, you can see it looks uh, a little pale, but that's fine because we, we decided this was going to be the top highlight or almost the top highlight anyway. So what we want to do now is bring in some contrast and some shading. So what I'll do is go back to the previous colour, the Night Quest of Flesh, and I'm actually going to use the airbrush to spray from below, really diluted like a glaze. And that will just get things done fast. So you can see we have these rough lines where we did the layering before. And what the airbrush will do is start to blur those lines and we'll get a bit of a uh, rougher idea. Don't worry if you don't have an airbrush. You can just do this uh, process by brush. So what you would do is just begin to glaze like this. Uh, if you do it by brush, you'll probably get a nicer uh, result. It'll probably look better. But the airbrush is quick. I'm going to 
use the airbrush to try and you know get things going um, get it a little bit darker and then I'll go back in with the brush and adjust so I'm going to turn the model um, away and just start airbrushing along here and we'll just start to blend and get the shadow back so you can see I'm just blurring those lines here on this side this is going to be uh, quite a dark shadow eventually what I need to do is is blur this line this might need some more brush work but we'll see how far we can get with the airbrush and we'll do it on the face too just uh, spraying from below and here along this part of the leg. So that's started to smooth everything out and it's also giving additional tone and an extra colour. It's definitely still not dark enough yet so what we'll do is just build that up in a couple layers. Popped a little Cadian flesh tone in there as a glaze and that will just bring a little more orange around the highlighted area and we'll just glaze that where we think the mid-tone should be. Now that's looking much smoother, uh, but we still don't have much contrast, so we will begin to add some darker colours. What we have to think about is being able to see some dark shadows from that kind of main viewing angle. So I'm photographing from maybe here, or here, or this is where we'll pick up and look at the model. If you look at where the calf is, it's around this area, we need to see some shadow. And from here you, you can see some, but I think it should have a little more. And then also from this side too, this should be darker. Um, this part here probably won't be as dark as this side because we were saying everything away uh, on this side would be really dark. So what we'll do is add a little more shadow to here and then we'll continue and push the shadow uh, right down on this side then we can kind of tweak with some highlights with the brush and adjust it. So uh, what I've done is added a little burn flesh from Vallejo into the previous colour. So I have just made it a little bit darker and will gradually just go darker. So I've got it loaded in the airbrush. I left the paint I had before in the cup and just added a slightly darker colour. So uh, this is where I was messing around with the brush, by the way, you just see that mark and eventually we'll probably get rid of that. So I'll start by kind of testing this color out on this part where I know it's gonna be dark and then I'll turn the model and just start spraying here. So that's probably as far as I wanna go. I'm gonna let that dry and come back then we'll grab this part under the thigh. That's enough. And then let's shade this side. So I'll start off quite low down. And then if I need it higher up, I can change the angle and spray a little higher. That looks pretty good. I'm going to grab under like the armpit area and the underside of that face. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and probably do this tone a couple more times and then we'll see how it's looking. So it's looking pretty nice now, uh, reasonable amount of contrast, nice colours, 
Uh, you can see the advantage of starting out so light is that you just get really nice colours when you apply them uh, and shade backwards in this way, then uh, they turn out really nice. Um, what I want to do now is actually change the tone. We have like a, a peachy light and then we have these kind of brownish red shadows. And now when I drop into the dark shadows, I want to change the tone and I'm going to use uh, Baraknar Burgundy because it's like a desaturated purple. So uh, it would just be more interesting. If you want something maybe uh, more natural perhaps or uh, less garish than purple, <laughs> then uh, you could use Rhinox Hide, for example. This is, this is great for shading skin. Um, or something like Burnt Umber would be an even more natural looking tone. I'll start with the dark shadow side because we definitely need this to be darker and just spray right on the bottom. This is like almost the safe zone to test out a colour um, because if it's too dark we don't have to roll it out across the rest. You can see uh, just adding a little of the purple it's actually quite nice it works with it because it's just uh, it's still reddish but we just change the tone so we have more contrast. So this is for the really, really dark areas. And I will catch the face with this. So I'm going to get a really sharp angle. That looks pretty cool. Black leather is another good colour you could use for shading. I think the uh, the point for me of this tutorial isn't the, the colours exactly, um, it's just uh, the method and, and how you can get to um, different places. You can start dark, build up to light, you can start light and go backwards, kind of like I've done here. All that matters is you use a method that you're comfortable with and then you get to the right place, having the, the right volumes and stuff like that. So I'm going to shade this area. Just carefully add a little more. And that looks really nice now. Got a nice range of tones and a nice contrast. So I think that's pretty cool. tend to use different recipes every time I paint skin, so I've never used this recipe before. Um, and I just always experiment and try stuff out. That front view is pretty cool now. And you can see um, why we just painted one colour along here, because you just need a tiny bit of shading around these muscles and it's actually adequate. And we can adjust this uh, if we still want a bit more. I've put a little bit of Rhinox Hide in my mix uh, because I like the tone that the burgundy has brought and I want to go darker but I don't want to go more purple and add more burgundy so I'm just adding um, a little bit of the brown. It's good to go as you go through the transition get the different tones in so it doesn't have to go purple to darker purple. We've kind of got uh, peachy orange and then it's um, like more pink and then more purple and then we just go to a kind of boring uh, brown in the end so that's going to be on the bottom of, of here. And this is a very dark shadow I've got on the back here, which um, maybe isn't as natural as it could be. We could actually have a softer shadow, but I want to make it look cool. So that's why I'm pushing this contrast quite a bit. And that's kind of it really. I might bring this a little higher. sort of thing and then that needs to be here too there we go so you can see doing that quick sketch at the beginning and then we got some nice volume and then just using glazes with the airbrush rather than building up the main color uh, gets you a very nice finish and can smooth out that transition and uh, yeah that's looking pretty good I think I need to do some adjustment with the brush. Um, I'm pretty happy with how this leg's come out. This one needs some work on the highlight 
because uh, that should be pretty bright uh, in that area and then the face definitely needs some work but for the time investment so far which isn't uh, a lot we've got a really nice foundation to work off one thing you might want to do is give it a matte varnish at this point and that's because when we airbrush uh, very diluted paints with some thinner you get a, a glossy uh, look so the shadows you can kind of see a, a little bit shiny okay so um, I'm really happy uh, with the point I'm at because I have an idea of, of uh, what it's gonna look like so we've got the general volume there the contrast is pretty much there um, and we've used quite a fast technique so if I was going to do it with just a brush, like I said, I'd do it in the same way and do some glazes and I, I would probably get a better result because I could be super precise. Um, but I'm so happy with the quality level and the time investment. Um, now what I want to do uh, is put some more time into it and I'm going to adjust the highlights and shadows uh, and be really fine with that, probably by using stippling. So the advantage of stippling is we can control where the pigment goes and be really precise. So what I'm looking to do is actually highlight here and the thigh and broaden this highlight, um, but really gradually because we've done this nice uh, airbrush work and I just wanna be careful with it. So what I'm gonna do is take our light skin highlight color we used before. I've added a tiny bit of Cadian flesh tone to it. And that's because where we've glazed over it, uh, this area isn't pure light skin anymore. It's been slightly darkened and what you need to do is mix up a color That's the right increment to sort of highlight from this So what I've done is I've made a color that's lighter than this and I tested it out You just do a couple dots and if they're wrong you adjust the color and you can erase the dots So it's no problem but I've kind of made my color now and what I'll do Keep the head out of the shot is I'm just going to adjust the highlights with stippling. So this is increasing the intensity, adjusting the width and you can also smooth some areas out. And this is going to be quite time consuming but we kind of save time in the first stages so I'm happy to invest it at this point and because I've got a general idea of, of what it's looking like it's uh, just finishing it off really so you can see where now what we do is we have all these little muscles like this and we can start to pick them out and we've basically been painting in general up till now like I said when we we're doing those highlights up and down, we were just being super general. And it's this point now we can start to pick out these little bits of muscles, like highlight the little individual parts on the uh, patella here and, and stuff like that. And then this thigh is also where I'll highlight. So what I'm gonna do is continue stippling here, brighten this part here, and just make sure this all works get the little highlights in there and stuff like that. And then if there's any parts uh, which are different that I wanna show you, then I'll go through that with you as well. So this highlight on the thigh ended up a little narrow. When we glazed it, it basically got narrower and narrower. So what I'm gonna do is stipple along this line and just soften it uh, and broaden that highlight. And also doing the stippling technique adds a nice bit of texture. So when I do the stippling, it's quite diluted paint. And what we're gonna do is just come up to that line and just gradually add little dots. And stippling is actually an easier method of blending than kind of all the other methods really it's just very time consuming. So the advantage is um, all that control of where the pigment's deposited and also control of uh, the volume, the blend, 
but the disadvantage is the time. So, but like I said, we save time by working sketchy at the beginning. So I'm just in, uh, just making this highlight a bit stronger around here, and then soften that edge a bit. Yeah, once you get the color right mixed up, it doesn't take too long. It's kind of, um, you know, for each of these parts, it's going to be maybe five to ten minutes of just stippling away. You can see where I've lightened up here, lightened here, and uh, it kind of flows really nicely from everything we've done. can see the detail I've added around here. So I just did some very light highlights to separate these two parts, little highlights in here. Um, and it really works. I think it's nice. Uh, the other thing is that, you know, we really exaggerate things in miniatures. I actually tried to paint this miniature uh, with a very natural look uh, before and it just wasn't very exciting. I sort of looked at real life references, which are always useful, and looked at the tones, which are, are very greyish. Um, and that's nice to do sometimes. I actually really like that style. But in the end, I decided that it wasn't very me. And uh, we pushed the contrast, pushed the colours. And uh, even though it's less realistic, uh, I love the look of it. I think it's cool. It's interesting and it's fun. And it's a fantasy miniature at the end of the day. So what I'm going to be doing is just kind of dotting away and uh, adjusting all this stuff. So hopefully you think I've shown you enough in terms of the technique. And when I've done that, you can kind of take a look. We've got some more things to do, like change the color of the bottom of the cheek here and quite a lot of work to do on the face. And we'll do the eyes and everything and show you that. But generally it's getting there. I think I need to add slightly darker shadows and stuff in here too. So I'm not quite finished on the skin yet, but I feel like taking a break and uh, doing a few features on the face. So we've got like the teeth, the tongue, the eyes, the eyebrows uh, to do. Uh, and we have a basic uh, light on the face, but we now need to add some more colours. So the first thing we need to do is add a little red on the cheek here and try not to shadow it uh, too severe. Um, have a little soft shadow in there but what I'm going to do is take a little bit of red and add that to whatever tone you have here so mine's probably a little bit of that light flesh mixed with Cadian and I'll just take that mix and add a little bit of red you can use a pure red such as you know a touch of Mephiston or you can use something like this reddish flesh which is kind of pinkish and natural all, all you need to do is kind of control how much you mix into that. So if you use quite a bright red, just add a tiny bit. Uh, if you use something more desaturated like that, then uh, you can obviously add a little bit more. So uh, you can either glaze this or you can kind of stipple it on. Again, it's all about whichever technique you like. Uh, but I'm just going to carefully add that red touch in there. Now I'm starting off quite reserved with how much red I've got uh, in the mix and I'll let it dry because it's always different when it's dry and then I can add a little more red if it's too subtle. And you can adjust that shape. Coming along underneath here. So I quite like that, it's quite subtle, um, but for me that's enough. And again, I encourage you to adjust it to your taste. So if you want it a bit uh, more striking, you can add more, but that's enough for me. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is uh, base coat the eyeball in a mix of pale blue and the highlight skin. So you're gonna make kind of a really uh, light greyish colour. I wouldn't go for pure white on eyeballs straight away. Um, anything like ivory with a tiny bit of grey in, just some form of off-white is great and uh, I'll just go and base coat those off-cam because uh, I don't really want to 
paint the eyeballs with the brush far away from me. So just got some sped up footage here. Uh, you can just see me basing the eye as best I can with that off white. And just take your time with this, do a couple coats. Try to do this when the skin isn't finished and then you can make any mistakes. I always get, uh, I always get some white on the skin. <laughs> so now I'm just adding the little red you get in the corners of the eyes, this reddish flesh. And this is worthwhile when you're on these scales. And you can use that same reddish tone to do the tongue and the lips and things like that. Not going in too much detail uh, for these features. Same with the teeth. Just want to hit them up with a, a kind of off-white bony colour. They're so small you really just need to pick those out. And then when it comes to doing the eyes, I always do the black part too small. Make sure the position's right and then just expand it and make it a little bigger. I almost always get a bit of paint on the eyelid. Uh, you can watch me trying really hard not to. Um, so again, it's a good point to do it. And then just finish off with that white dot and you can add some color to the iris if you like too. After working uh, on the face for some time, it's feeling pretty much finished. Uh, I'm, I'm quite happy uh, with how she's looking. And basically, no matter uh, the project, you're always gonna get to this point where you are pretty much done and you're kind of just finessing it and, and making some adjustments. And kind of one of the things I wanted to get across in this tutorial is it doesn't really matter how you get to that place in terms of technique. It's more important to get this sort of highlight in the right place, this uh, nice shading, and there's so many ways to get there that I encourage you to kind of Use the technique you feel most comfortable with. So obviously with this, we kind of uh, went from dark to light and then uh, I worked backwards putting all the shadows in. But you might prefer to actually take more time building up to that light and then uh, just doing sort of slight adjustments. It's all about what you're comfortable with and just uh, trying to uh, achieve things in the way that uh, you can do them best. So. When it comes to this part, we can use a number of techniques again to make some adjustments. So for me, there's areas like here with the shoulder where I need more contrast. Uh, I'm gonna be using glazing to do this, but there might be other areas I need to fix where I use different techniques. So glazing, we've obviously talked about before. Um, what I'm gonna use is some Barrack Nile Burgundy on its own, very, very diluted to try and bring stronger shadows. Or a glaze is fantastic for doing a, a subtle alteration. So with the shoulder, we just needed to really gradually darken it just a little bit. With something like the back of this arm, actually we need a bit more of a drastic change uh, because we have the volume that we're not quite right. So this, we want some slightly thicker paint, basically so we can get on with it and get it done. I'll probably re-layer this in this way with brush strokes and then go back to that glaze technique and blend it back in once I've altered the volumes. I'm kind of going through this because I think it's difficult when you get to a certain point to know how to adjust stuff, but also that you don't you shouldn't be afraid to go through these things and just take your time adjusting it and getting it right. If you're using reasonably diluted paint, then you actually have uh, a decent amount of, of work time and, and room for adjustment. So I'm sort of more than comfortable changing these arms because I know all the paint's quite thin and I can still get a good result. So I'll go ahead and adjust this and then glaze that burgundy back in and then we'll take a look at some other elements. It'll get to a point where you're maybe going around in circles or you're not sure if you're actually improving it and you're kind of making these adjustments. Um, it'll just get to a point where it's done. <laughs> so, for example, sometimes I look at parts and I don't think, okay, that's not great, and I try to improve it. Uh, and for one reason or another, it might end up looking worse 
or it didn't make much difference and you know there's loads of these things that can go on so my point is uh, paint while it's still fun make it look good and, and have some patience but you'll get to a point where you'll still see mistakes but it's it, it becomes not worth fixing so there's lots of parts on this figure uh, that I could go super crazy over making perfect and perfect um, in the past sometimes I've kept doing corrections and I've ended up with loads of paint on there and it actually doesn't look as good because there's too many layers of paint so I've pretty much got to that point with my figure um, there's definitely areas that I could improve but I think it looks really nice and I'm just kind of just kind of done with it and I don't mean that in a, a negative way but I'm just really happy with the results and I could spend hours more on it and it wouldn't really change the overall look of the piece or my feelings towards the piece. You've kind of got to enjoy this hobby <laughs> and, uh, and stop when it's not fun anymore. But I've had loads of fun on this and I, I love how it looks so I think I'm just going to leave the skin there. Maybe when I paint all the other elements uh, and it's finished I could come back to it but it just, just feels right. So there's bits that aren't super perfect, but uh, overall uh, it looks really cool. One thing uh, I want to talk about is having a reflection or uh, a secondary light. And if we look at this front view here, we can see we have the main light and then it drops to shadow. What can look really nice on skin is if you have some kind of refre reflection or secondary. And for me, that would be a reflection along the back of the leg here, and that would be coming from the water. So the light hitting the water and bouncing up and hitting this. And that also works really well to frame it, because as we drop to the shadow, it hits the light again. I am choosing not to add a secondary light. And the reason is basically what I just said. I've kind of, I'm really happy with how it looks. Um, I, I, I could add that, but I don't think I want to. I don't mind the fact that it drops all the way to the dark shadow here. And the other thing is the way it's presented on the base, you can't actually uh, see too much from, from this side because the wolf obscures a lot of it. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of happy really, but as a kind of uh, bit of criticism towards myself, having a secondary reflection across the leg uh, would be really nice um, but then we might get into a very complex area where we think actually each of the water droplets or where it's splashed could cast lots of little reflective lights on it but I'm just I'm just really happy with it so leave it when you're happy um, so yeah that's kind of it for the skin for now we've just got a couple other last bits to do so continuing from my previous point, I've just been going over the model, checking some of the parts. Some bits I tried to uh, change and uh, it didn't look better. It looks a bit worse. <laughs> uh, and then I had to, to rescue it. So for me, I'm like, okay, this is done. And actually, in, in some ways, you don't want to do it 100% finished as well. Uh, because when we paint the other elements, one, uh, it can change your view because we, when we have no other colours painted, it's hard to judge the contrast exactly. We're only judging the contrast of this skin in isolation. It helps when we base coated the Rhinox hide. It was obviously a lot worse before, but we've still got no other colours and we have all the other colours of the base. So with nothing else to compare it to, it's often difficult to judge. And the other reason is, um, if everything's perfect, what if we make a mistake painting this leather and get a bit of that on the skin? <laughs> then we're going to have to correct that anyway. So basically leaving the skin at 95% complete is good at this point. And then we're going to paint the other elements um, in the next tutorial. And we can sort of make any changes to the skin uh, later. But really happy with where it's looking. Um, learned a bunch of things along the way. I love this Barrack Nile Burgundy as a shadow. Uh, it's not crazy realistic, but this is a really 
high fantasy piece and I think it's really cool. And the main side, the view side, I'm, I'm really happy with. I'm really happy with the colour in the face and, and the shading on the legs. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and that you found it um, easy to follow as always. And like I've said throughout the tutorial, my main thing to get across is the most important thing uh, on these figures is getting the volumes correct, the highlight placement and the contrast right. And we've got all these different techniques at our disposal and it's just trying to get to this place in the way we feel most comfortable. So, you know, this tutorial, we basically sketched it out and we use the airbrush quite a bit to, to glaze and, and bring those colours back. But we could similarly start off with this burgundy colour that we ended up using as the shadow. We could base coat in that and layer all the way up to the top. Um, so yeah, tons of different ways. We can do it with the brush or the airbrush, just whatever we have. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this has certainly been one of my most enjoyable figures. Obviously because it's a cotton paint figure and probably the one that I wanted to produce the most. So it's been amazing to paint it. But at the same time, I think it's one of my best uh, paint jobs for skin. So I'm really happy with that. And uh, I feel like I learned a lot along the way. So I hope that you can get the same thing, that you learn a bunch of stuff and you enjoy the result. So looking forward to next time where we paint this enormous amount of hair and uh, some quite pleasant details to paint, you know. It's, I think the cool thing about this figure is it is basically skin and that's the really hard job. And actually things like painting the leather elements are going to be so simple in comparison because they'll just need a couple highlights and, and a little bit of silver on here and just some skulls. So I'm excited to get to this point because it should be a relatively easy time and just getting through all these details. So yeah, see you next time.